How's it going? Welcome to Co-op 2000 Introduction to Web Programming. This is the first of many videos you'll be watching in this course. I find it, uh, it'll it give you as an online student um, just a little bit of a personal touch of having uh, to let you know that there really is an instructor at the other end of your monitor. Um, my name's Dave and a little bit more about me here in just a minute but I'm your professor for this course. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about you know, how you can navigate the World Classroom. We're going to take a look at the syllabus. Um, we're also, I'm also going to give you a broad overview of the course. We're going to take a look at some external resources that I've provided for you um, that you can check out while you're taking this course. We're also going to look at the discussions and chat about you know, how the discussion area works and what you're kind of expected of in there. We're also going to take a look at assignments and how you can access those and submit those assignments. And then at the very end, we're going to finally take a look at um, just some of your weekly content and how that um, works in the World Classroom. Again, uh, I'm guessing this might be some of you, this could be your first online course. That's great. Um, I'm here to help you every step of the way. Um, I'm excited about you learning the basics of how to be a web designer. Perhaps you're pursuing a career in web design, perhaps you're just kind of a hobbyist who wants to learn how to do it. Either way, the class and I are here to help. Um, so sit back and I'm going to show you some more things in this video. So when you first log into the course, this is what you probably saw. All of our main content that you'll need each week is provided here with you for you on the home page. Here's also some information down here at the bottom for uh, more information about the George Herbert Walker School of Business and Technology, which is what your class, that's the, uh, the school that your class is within, within Webster University. Here's information about the Math and Computer Science Department. And I also down have here, down at the bottom, is information about the various certificates because this introductory 2000 course facilitates the accomplishment of both certificates depending on which one that you go for. Over here on the left hand side, this might be collapsed. You can click this to expand it. These are the different tools that you'll use each week. The green asterisk generally means that there's something new that you need to check out in there. For example, in the discussion area, maybe it means that there's a new post in the discussion area. Um, another thing, this is this is different for you. You only see this one tab. You don't see the build and teach. Um, this just lets you know uh, your section. One of the things that I would like to show you just real quick, I'm going to bounce over to my home page. This is what your homepage looks like. I have, as soon as this loads, I have, this is just an example of all the courses that I'm working on as an instructional designer for Webster. But one of the things I do want to call your attention to is this check browser link. By clicking on this, this will run through a series of tests to make sure that your browser is ready for the World Classroom. Um, I'm using the most updated version of Firefox, so that's why I get this red check. But if you had other red checks, I'm sorry, red X's here, that would just, it would give you information on how you can update your browser to make sure that uh, you'll have the best experience. The main one to look at these days is the Java down here at the bottom. If you don't have Java enabled or if you haven't updated your Java, sometimes videos won't work, sometimes you won't be able to um, submit files or uh, within the World Classroom, perhaps you're submitting a file as an attachment to an assignment or a discussion area, uh, you'll have problems with that. So make sure that your Java at least has that green check. So I'm going to go back into our course. So now let's take a look at some of this content that's here on the home page. The first place that you're most likely going to go, I would guess, is here into the Welcome Learning Module. A learning module is kind of like stepping into an area of the class. Everything that you need for that area is all provided within the Welcome Learning Module. Um, so if there's any specific discussions that you need to do within that learning module, or if there's any assignments, it will all be provided within that learning module. Uh, let's just talk about just the interface of the learning module. Up here, we have some breadcrumbs that will just take you back to the home page, and this lets you know that you're in the Welcome Learning Module. So if you're in a different page, you can always click on the Welcome I mean, you can click on the name of the learning module and it'll take you back to the main beginning of the learning module. You can also print information in the learning module. You can also navigate through the learning module using these navigational buttons here. This will jump you back to um, the front. This will take you to the next pages. If I was on the second page, I can always back up one page by going to the next. Most likely, I'm guessing you'll be navigating through the learning module using either this, these 
navigational areas up here at the top, or perhaps you're going to be utilizing the table of contents. Within the table of contents here, this lists all of the pages within the learning module, but depending on the learning module, you might have pages within pages, so you'll have to remember to expand the different area, the different pages within the learning module because they're grouped with different headings. This first page in our welcome learning module just gives you an overview of how you can set up your browser. Like I mentioned just a second ago, using that browser link on your home page is really uh, the first place that I would recommend doing. And then here's different tutorials on information about uh, how you can work with get your browser set up as well. Here's links to the quick start guide that'll help you get ready. Um, if you felt this, you know, if this is your first online course, that might be a good way to, to a place to go. In terms of tips of success, uh, these are just recommendations uh, for online students. Technical support, this is contacting the University Help Desk and information to help uh, if you're having trouble with your um, experience. You can also contact the Online Learning Center, which is actually where I work within Webster. So you can, you can contact the Online Learning Center if you have a problem, but you, then again, you can also contact me and I, I, I can help you. <laughs> and then information about academic accommodations. If you need accommodations in this course, here's information about that and then information about copyright. Let's go to the next page in our learning module, our welcome learning module. Here, this is basically what I would say to you if this was the first day. If you were sitting with me in a face-to-face -face class, this is kind of my introduction that I like to give uh, on the first night of class. Um, this is just a blog post that kind of helps you get information about different text editors that are out there because you're going to need a text editor. Um, and these are all free. The two ones that I would recommend for PC would be Notepad++ or Crimson Editor. When you click on these links, it'll just take you to where you can go and find information about those editors. I generally use a PC. I also have a Mac at home. At home, I, I don't use a simple text editor. I use more sophisticated text editors, but there is a text editor that I will talk about here in a little bit called Text Wrangler uh, for Mac that will help you. Here's just some information that I would recommend um, about how you can be successful in this course. You know, So be sure that you don't just learn how to get your editor to do what you need it to do. You know, be sure that you develop a personal workflow and envision yourself in the future working for a web design firm. And so you can develop your own personal workflow. And then all the code that you produce, you know, learn how to produce it quickly and make sure that it's usable for perhaps other designers and make sure it's always functional for the user. And then be sure that you're utilizing the steps described within the web development lifecycle. More about that here in a little bit. And then always make sure you understand the needs of the user. As you scroll down, these are just some examples of the websites that you're going to be creating within this class. Um, you're going to be work, learning how to create this Groundswell website. This is just an example of how it looks. You're also going to be uh, creating a very simple History of Webster website. This is just an example of how that website will look. And then for your own term project, you're going to be creating your own website. What you're going to be doing for that, uh, we'll talk about that more here in just a minute, but you're basically going to be creating a movie website that's centered around a specific genre. And uh, it could, I'm guessing, follow a similar format to the Groundswell website. That's totally up to you. So here's other information about that I'd like to provide you here to introduce the course. You're also going to notice here that I'm going to be recommending that you go out and watch these videos on lynda.com. We'll talk about that more here in a second. But basically, lynda.com is basically where you can get, um, imagine, you know, that's where you get basically the, the demo aspect of the course, where you actually have someone demoing for you how to produce the code and edit the code. So um, that's what you would be getting if you were sitting with me in a face-to-face -face class. I'm going to be doing some of those videos myself, but then some of them you'll go out to Lynda and I'll have specific Lynda videos for you to watch. And that's a free, well, it's not normally free, but through your student fees at Webster University, you have access to that amazing resource. Here's my introduction. This is a little bit about me and my background. You'll notice here that I'm directing you to contact me through the World Classroom Mail tool. That's this tool directly here within the course, this mail tool right here. Um, I, I would, I'd like you to do that so then all of our transcript of all of our conversation is stored within the course so that if there's ever a problem in the future, we can always restore the course and go back and see all of the communication that I have between you and I. Um, if there's ever a situation where you do contact me through my Webster email address, depending on this, the type of email, I might have to ask you to go back into the course 
and send that email to me directly within the course so we can have just uh, an archive of that. Um, here, for example, I'm interested to find out, you know, are you taking this course because you're more of like a hobbyist or are you actually wanting to, to pursue a career in the discipline? Um, I'm an instructional designer and I actually build the courses that you're taking. Um, so I built this course. Uh, I'd say all that just to let you know that I'm just very knowledgeable about the, 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 the environment that you're working within. So if you have trouble, just please, you know, contact me if you have, if you have problems in it because I work within the Online Learning Center. So enough about me. You know, I'd like to learn more about you. Um, so after you've done watching this video and after you've gone through and read all, through all of these different pages here, um, that'll be your opportunity to go in, and introduce yourself to the class and you will do that right here. So to introduce yourself to the class, you basically can respond to this discussion question by clicking create a message, and this will allow you to create your first message. In the subject, you could put something like, hi, my name is Joey, and then I'd like to meet everybody or something, and then here you can answer those questions within the message area. If you wanted to attach a photo of yourself, that's a fun thing that a lot of students tend to do at the very beginning. If you do write your posting in HTML, make sure that you click this Use HTML button, and then it will be coded for you, and then you would hit Post. Depending on when you come in here, you might see, since we have at least 12 students in the class in the very beginning, you might see multiple messages in here, and you can actually start clicking on other people's messages, and then meeting them, having conversations with them about what they've said in their introduction. The next page in the learning module is just this program overview page. This is a page that's put in here from my department. They just The department wants to make sure that you understand exactly where you are in the program, depending on if you're doing either the website design or even the website development courses. Uh, specifically here lists the, the courses within the website design course listings. And then here you'll actually get descriptions of the courses. And this new page here this is a graphic that just kind of lets you know where you are within the website design certificate. Uh, this, this information, these last couple pages were created by Martha Smith, who is over the website design certificate program. So you'll start off here taking 2000, and, and then you can either go on to taking 2170, which is the usability and accessibility course, or a good segue after this course I would highly recommend is taking my Co-op 2120 Web Editors course. This course is a prerequisite for that course, but as of right now, these are the two courses that I'm currently teaching within the department, so I would hope to have you again in class if you were to go and take my Co-op 2120 Web Editors course. I'll talk more about that later on uh, throughout the course. Let's go ahead and go over to the course overview. The course overview is basically where everything that you need to know about the course uh, in terms of assignments, um, how to contact me, communicating with the class, all of that information is all right here. This is commonly what you would be hearing from me on the first night of class. So here I talk about how I would like all of your course communication to be within the class and preferably to ask your questions within the general questions area. That is, I mean I have links to, like for example, I'll show you just a link to it here, but this is a link to the general questions area. Here you can ask questions uh, basically just whatever about whatever you'd like. Here this is questions for the instructor, which is me and this is questions for the class. When you ask questions this way, as opposed to asking me questions in the mail tool, this way everyone can see the questions that you have and perhaps someone else in the class will be able to answer your question. And then other people in the class won't ask that question because they know that you've asked it and they'll wait for me to come over here and respond. Another way to get to the general questions area is just by going directly to the discussions tool and you'll find this at the top of the page. So whenever you first get into the course, you know, if you, or if you have a question, you can always just come over here and see what questions students are asking. This will be populated with messages. It'll say, you know, uh, 20 messages, one message, etc. And then you would go directly in here and you would see all the different questions that students have, and then you would be able to expand those messages and see the responses to those questions. So I'm going to pop back into the overview. So let's scroll back down, keep scrolling. So class communication. Then here's information about your specific assignments. 
this little um, inter this little module here basically lets you know about all the specific information that you need to know about all of your assignments. For example, we have good, bad, and the ugly discussion. Uh, this is where we actually go and critique um, similar websites. So it would be like two pizza websites or uh, two theater park, uh, two movie theater websites or two restaurant websites or the key is that they have to be similar and then we're going to be critiquing them each week on specific things. So we're not doing it in this first week but in week two you're going to be finding two similar websites and you're going to be critiquing them in terms of how their con content is meaningful or not and if they have a solid um, about page. These are just things that I'm trying to get us to uh, understand and see in other websites and be able to talk about what's good and bad examples and then I'm hoping that you're going to be applying that that information to the development of your own term project but also to your future career as a web designer so these are just some key things that I think that all websites need to have here I talked specifically about uh, the homework in this course you'll notice that I tried to make this course not homework intensive so you'll have only three main homework assignments on your homework assignments, basically you're asked to follow along with the Linda videos that you watch, and then you're going to um, be producing some some code that's very similar to what the videos describe. And this code could actually be used for your term project, which is great. So everything that you do in this course is always developing for the term project. In terms of quizzes, um, there are four quizzes within the course in week two, three, six, and seven. Um, this just lets you know how much it's worth in the terms of the final grade. Uh, quizzes are going to be multiple choice and true-false questions. Um, you'll have about an hour to complete the quiz. We'll talk more about quizzes later. And then for your term project, this is the information about all everything that you need to know about the term project. So here I introduced the term project and exactly what we're doing. So like I said, you're going to be creating a movie genre fan website, so perhaps your movie genre might be 1990s romantic comedies, or maybe it's 1980s action movies. This course has seen them all. We've even seen some weird ones like uh, 1970s B-horror movies. I even had a student once that did a term project on Christmas movies. I mean, it really just depends on what you'd like to make your movie website about. Um, here's a very important statement. Um, you need to make sure that your term project website meets the needs of the user and we're going to be talking about more about that and how we're going to utilize the web development lifecycle to make sure that that happens. Here's all the specifics of your term project. This is how your term project will be specifically graded. In a second when we look at the syllabus you'll actually see the rubric that I'll be using to grade your term project. So always as you're working on your term project always be coming back here and seeing okay how many pages do I need? What exactly do I need to know about images? How do I need to have my style sheet set up? All of that information is all provided right here. And also down here at the bottom, I mentioned that at the very end of the course during week eight, we're all going to be reviewing each other's term projects, and we're going to be using a usability questionnaire. So you can click on this link and download that. This is just an example of how it's going to look. So you'll be able to fill, you'll be able to review someone's website, and then you'll also be able to give them more specific feedback about the website as well. And then let's take a look at the next assignment, Term Project Journal. Uh, each week you're going to be posting just a small snippet of how you're developing your website and for the whole class to see because I want this class to not just be you by yourself learning on how to make a website or even just you and me learning on how to make a website. I want you to collaborate with other students in the class. I want you to be excited and engaged in other people's content. Some people are going to be making websites about uh, maybe their favorite actor or maybe they're making websites about a specific genre and I want you to go out and see all of the different term projects and how everyone's term projects are developing. Um, that'll just basically make, you know, it'll give you this feeling this class is actually a community of people learning. And that's why uh, two topic, no pro term project can have the same topic. So if someone, the first person to contact me and say they want to do a 1980s action movies, they're the, they're the one that's going to um, have that. Um, but I do have uh, an assignment the first week where you can actually submit to me your top three choices and I'll take all of those into consideration so maybe you might have to end up getting your second choice or third choice. <coughs> Excuse me. So each week there's going to be specific topics for your term project and this doesn't really tell you much other than these are just kind of where I'm pulling them out of the textbook. More about textbook here in a little bit. This course does have a midterm and a final exam. That's where you're going to be making this history of Webster website. 
uh, the midterm will build, uh, the final will bid, build upon what you built in the midterm. Just as an FYI about that. And then each week I'm allowing two students to earn extra credit points. There is eight weeks in the course, so if two students were to do it every week, or maybe one, uh, one week nobody volunteers, maybe one week only one person volunteers, so with 12 people in the course, um, that'll be plenty of time for everyone to be able to ha have an opportunity for extra credit points. This is just one of the opportunities in the course where I'll be able to give you some extra credit. But basically what you're asked to do is I have a specific um, external resource in the form of like a blog post that's posted within uh, the week. You can go out and review that blog post and then you're going to be discussing it in the, in the discussion area with the class, like what we can take away from that blog post blog post and then you're going to be posing a question for the class to respond to so if you think there's something very interesting in the post you're going to pose an open-ended question for the class to respond to and you're actually going to be leading that discussion um, in the discussion area and you will earn 10 points for doing that 10 points towards your final grade you'll notice that many of these assignments are worth 10 points so if you miss a few assignments or you don't do well on an assignment doing this one opportunity here example is just one example of extra credit that I will be able to, to give you to help you make up those missing grades. So now that we reviewed all of just basically I just gave you a broad overview of all of the assignments, let's keep scrolling down here to the bottom. Here is contact information for, um, like I said, Martha Smith. She's the program director over my department, so she's my direct mentor. The department chair, Al Counts, and then our department representative, Trish Dillinger. Um, so if you have questions that I actually might direct you to some of them to ask questions or if for, if for some reason you need to contact them with other questions that you might have, here's their information. So now let's take a look at some external resources that I also have for you here within this learning module. This is just a great way for you to kind of go above and beyond or outside the scope of this course and continue your learning. Um, there's some really good HTML and CSS resources that I have for you right here. For example, this Don't Fear the Internet site. This is a great site that has some really engaging videos. Uh, for, for those of you who are new to web design, I highly recommend going to this website and watching some of these. They are skewed toward developing sites in WordPress, but which you're not doing in this class. But um, the, the introductory ones like HTML and CSS, these are great. Um, definitely check those out. Um, if you're interested, one of my favorite web blogs is Lifehacker. So you can come out here to Lifehacker, and they actually have um, some information on how to make a website and they have I believe it's four different video oh they actually have a new one now so they have five so this is just some videos that from this fun website that talk to you about how to make a website perhaps you might want to go there and learn some information um, here's just other information that you can get uh, on CSS and other HTML code so if you have questions this is a great way Adobe Cooler this is a fun website that we're going to be talking more about um, in week three I believe in the course this is where you can kind of come and choose colors for your course, so that's a fun, fun site to explore. Validation, we're going to be validating our websites, uh, our HTML with the W3C um, validation tool, or, the C, or the C, we're also going to be validating our CSS as well. Here's the website and design and development blogs that you're going to be getting posts within, within the course each week. Um, I can't remember who what post is for our first week, but we'll look at that here in a little bit. But these are just great websites where you could kind of go and just you know see what's new um, within web design. For example, this Design Informer within Smashing Magazine, great great blog. Uh, 24 Ways blog. This is one of my favorite ones. Like I'm highly looking forward to it coming up this Christmas because what they do is they have guest bloggers come in in each of the days within December. There's a new post so. Um, freelance folder this is a great resource for those of you who are considering this is not geared just to web design um, it's also for for graphic designers as well um, six revisions this is another great website about uh, web design and graphic design so definitely come out here and check out these things and perhaps be inspired to learn new things um, and then Webster library databases uh, the main one that we'll be using here within this course is the Linda database um, to access the Linda database, you're going to be of the videos that you'll be watching within this course. You'll need to imp input your car's ID, and your which is your like for example, mine is David Holman 33, uh, and then you also need to put in your seven-digit Webster ID number. Um, if you have trouble accessing this resources, you can always uh, uh, let me know, and I can see what's going on with that. 
um, but you should be able to have access. But here's also information for the library. Other Webster resources that you might need, um, the Academic Resource Center. I'm guessing you're not going to need the Writing Center. There's not. A, I mean, there is writing in this course, but I'm not going to be grading you on spelling and grammar. And um, so here's some other tips as well for writing. But yeah, the main area of the thing that I would think you'd be participating in this page each week is if, you, if you're just kind of looking for something to kind of go on and explore, is you'll be, excuse me, you'll be coming to this web design and development blog area and also these HTML and CSS resources. The last page in this learning module is just a link, like I showed you earlier, a link to the general questions area, which is where you will ask questions within the course. Now again, if you have a perhaps a personal matter that you need to ask, uh, talk to me about, you can uh, that would be better to ask me within the mail tool. For example, the mail tool, you just come in here to the mail message, you'll create a new message, and then you'll browse for recipients. Um, the only people that are in the course right now is one of my developers for the, that helps me develop the courses, and then Martha Smith. She's in all of our courses. But so the, once you choose a name, it'll automatically be populated right here, and then you can write a subject and then you can also write uh, the message. Please help me out by keeping your subjects descriptive. That goes for the mail and the discussion area. Oh, one thing you can also do is you can also add an attachment to a message. When you add an attachment to a message, you'll notice that you'll get this My Computer icon. This My Computer icon is basically a Java applet that will open up and so you can browse for something to um, add to the email. If you're not seeing this My Computer icon, that means that you're having trouble with Java. So now we're back on the home page. Let's take a look at the syllabus. So here we have more uh, specific information that my department would like to provide you in terms of what you're expected of in this course, but also some departmental information. So. Here we have description of the course. We also have the objectives and the things that you're specifically going to be learning in the course. Here we have information about our textbook. Um, the textbook, I mean, you don't necessarily have to purchase it from MBS, which is where you might be trying to purchase your book if you went through the, the Webster online website. Um, you can purchase it through Amazon. You also don't necessarily, like let's say you were to find a really good deal on Amazon, but you noticed that it didn't have the, the resources CD. That's fine, because I'm going to be providing you all the, uh, the the data files here within the course. So all you need is just basically a copy of the sixth edition of the HTML, XHTML, and CSS complete. So make sure that you get that. I'm also going to, I'll show you here in just a second, I have the first three chapters here within the course to give you time if you haven't gotten it yet within the first week. Here's information about um, the course. For example, we're going to have seven discussion questions within the course. Those are the discussion questions, the good, bad, and the ugly discussion questions that we talked about, where you're comparing uh, websites based on different web principles. There's three homework assignments. There's only four quizzes within the course. There's two exams, a midterm and a final. We have a term project, and then we have our term project journal. Again, the term project journal is just where you're going to be sharing with the class uh, some how your term project is developing. And at the very end of the course, you're going to, there's a small usability assignment where you're, you're basically critiquing and giving feedback to the other students in the class on their websites. Activities, this lets you know some different activities. Comprehensive term project, we've already kind of talked about, chat about that. Uh, midterm and a final is hands-on. Policy statements, some things that you might need to look for here. Um, in terms of special services, if there's accommodations that you need, be sure that you follow the directions listed there and contact the Academic Resource Center. Course policies. Um, uh, we don't generally give incompletes. If something drastic happens, let me know and I can put you in contact of, of my uh, department mentor, Martha Smith, and she can help figure out if you need an incomplete or not. Then you can scroll down here to the bottom and then you can also get information about the weekly content. Here I just give you a broad overview of the topics that we're going to be covering that week and the reading. This will help you if you need to, let's say you know you're going out of town in week three, you can go ahead and be sure that you get that reading done. One quick thing I would like to say, uh, the course is an eight week course, which means that it's an intense course I and mean, we have a lot to learn in eight weeks. But please don't be overwhelmed at the um, amount of readings that you have to do within the first couple weeks because 
one thing that you should realize is that um, I make I met, does specifically designed the course to be kind of heavy at the beginning so we can spend the last half of the course after the midterm working on our term projects. So there's a lot of ground that we need to cover within the first just three weeks, actually. So we have to read chapter one this week. I also have some videos that you need to watch that are getting basically, like I said with the Linda videos, those are kind of like imagine me standing in front of you in a classroom and what you would get. Because I don't want this course just to be reading from a book and taking quizzes because you could essentially do that without a course and you wouldn't have to pay as much as you did for this course. So that's why I'm trying to make this course much more than just reading and submitting assignments. There's no test this week. There is a term project journal, uh, which is remember, you're basically this journal, you're just sharing your ideas with the class and you're going out and researching similar movie genre websites and seeing which ones they, what they have to show and comparing you know, that with, with um, what your site hopefully will be. And then for the discussion question this week, you're just introducing yourself. So the first, the week one is actually fairly light. Then we get speed up a little bit more. Uh, in week two, we need to actually start coding. So we're finally going to be using our text editors because you should have chosen one by then. And you're actually going to be reading chapters one, to chapter sorry, chapters two and three. And um, and also another thing to know is that some web design course intro to web design courses that you might take, they don't uh, get you into CSS till further on in the course. But CSS is such a powerful tool. So the way that we designed this course is that you're actually going to be learning about CSS from, from day one. It's not something that you're just going to learn about at the end um, because it's such a powerful way to control the visual design and layout of your of your website. So, And then in week two, we are going to have um, your first quiz. And all of the quizzes are always, except for the very last quiz, are always going to be about the previous content. So in week two, you're going to be quizzed about what we what we talked about in week one. Week two, there's also another term project journal. And then in week two, you also have your very first homework assignment, and there's also an online discussion. This is the good, bad, and the ugly discussion, like we mentioned earlier. So in this discussion, you're basically finding two similar websites, and then you're critiquing um, which one has more meaningful content, which one doesn't, and why. And then you're going to be critiquing their about pages. So week two is very similar to week one except we have an extra chapter to read, you're also going to have your first quiz, and then you're also going to have your first homework assignment. And then I'm not going to go through this whole syllabus, but you know, let me know if you have questions. This will help you prepare. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. This lets you know about the specific Linda videos that I'm asking you to watch. We're going to talk more about Linda videos here in just a minute, because that's a very important aspect of the course, but the, here's the two Linda videos that we're going to be utilizing. So here's where I talk about the term project. This is the exact same information that you found on the course overview. But maybe you might want to print out your syllabus and put it in a binder, like and bring it to class like you would in a face-to-face -face class. This will allow you to do that. So here I just have the specific information about the syllabus, I mean specific information about the term project and what you need to produce for that. And then extra credit, here's where I mention the extra credit. We have the submitting the um, leading the discussions on the blog posts each week. And then here is how your term project is actually going to be evaluated. So here I'm going to be specifically rating you on did you have a home page, was it labeled index.htm. Here I'm going to be writing information about what all of your other pages are on your term project because your term project is at least supposed to have five pages. Um, Additional pages is optional. It doesn't mean it's going to give you extra credit, but additional pages is optional. Um, so here's just other components that I'm going to be evaluating you, your term project on. And I'm giving you all of this up front because I want you to know everything up front and not um, find, be blindsided by something at the end of the course. And then this is, the again, the usability questionnaire that other students are going to be filling out for your term project. So the syllabus is um, a pretty major thing that I recommend you reviewing here within the first week. Let me know if you have any questions about it. Let's go ahead and go back to the home page. We can go, we've taken a look at our welcome learning module, we've taken a look at the syllabus. Now let's take a look at what's here within the textbook e-reserves. So let's say you're having trouble getting your, your book in because you ordered it from Amazon or Barnes Noble or, or somewhere else. Um, here you can have access to the first three chapters of the book. 
These will help you prepare for your quizzes and the other assignments that I'm having you read. Within the first um, two weeks of the course, we read through chapters one through three. And then here's the different appendixes that I was able to provide you from the publisher. Some of these appendix actually aren't even provided within your version of the textbook. Um, so some of these other appendices may help. The main one that you'll be utilizing throughout the course is the CSS properties and values. Perhaps the browser safe color palette. Um, accessibility standards is, is very useful. Publishing to a web page to a server will be helpful, but we're going to be publishing our pages with, to lab books, which is a little bit different than what the book talks about. Let's go ahead and go back to the home page. General questions, this is just a link like we've talked about before where you can actually go and submit your uh, questions um, that you might have within uh, the course. So as you log into the course, if you have a question, this is a great way to, for you to go. I also recommend going here and seeing what questions other people have. Perhaps you can help them out. Now let's take a look at our very first learning module. This is week one. So basically everything that you need to do this week is all found here within the week one learning module. Let's not forget that when we first get into a learning module, we can always navigate learning modules through using these navigational links up here at the top. We can also print learning modules. When you hit print, you can select which pages in the learning module that you would like to print. You can also navigate the learning module by utilizing this table of contents over here on the left. Don't forget that this table of contents, you might need to expand certain areas to find the content within, underneath them. I recommend perhaps coming and going ahead and expanding all of them. So each week I'm going to be providing you an overview. This is basically an introdu introduction to the week where I'll talk to you about the things that we're going to be covering. I'll also list for you specific objectives that you need to make sure that you can agree with or perhaps you can make sure that you do. So for example this week, you know, describe HTTP and its associated English with web development. If you get to the end of the week and you can't do that, then you've missed something. So make sure you go back and learn that information. This week I also give you an extra reading uh, how web pages work. This will give you information on um, additional, I mean just basically an, an, another resource for you to go and learn about the web. And then this week I also have for you, this is this is your introductory question that you might have answered already before you've gotten up to this point. Um, so make sure that you introduce yourself to the class here. And then each week I'm also going to provide you specific lecture material. So this is basically what you'd be covering with me within the classroom. And then each week I'm also going to be giving you additional resources. So this is where you're going to find your extra credit blog post. For example, in week one, you know, can you teach yourself web design? So I'm, I'm, I would suggest everyone going on and reading the blog post, but two students in the class have an opportunity to earn extra credit by summarizing the blog post and um, basically letting me know, hey, I'd like to do extra credit this week, and then I will allow them to do the extra credit. Then they'll go into the discussion area, and they'll summarize the blog post for us, and then they'll ask every, then they'll ask the class a question about that blog post. And this is where that discussion will happen for that blog post. And again, it's extra credit. And then each week, if you click on these links over here, I'm also going to give you the PowerPoint from the, from the publisher. This might help you prepare for the quiz. Totally up to you if you look at it or not. Each week I also have um, extra information that the publisher would like to say about different things that didn't make it into the textbook. So here's information about that. And then at the very end of every week, we also have an activities page. This is where I'll list for you all of the readings that you're supposed to be reading. So for example, this week you're from our assigned textbook, you're supposed to be reading the introduction to HTML, XHTML, and CSS. Here's a link to that textbook e-reserves file. And then download supplemental chapter one resources. These are the resources, these are from, from the resource CD. So when you click on this, it's going to ask you to download the chapter one localhost zip file. This is just the file that you need that has all of the files that are referenced in the book. So I highly recommend using that. And then when, when you click OK, it'll download to wherever you're, you have it set up in your computer to download. And then just make sure you understand how to unzip it. And we'll talk more about that later. And then um, the How Pages Work resource, that's not necessarily required for you to read this week, but it's just a, another resource for you to go and learn about the, the web and resources. And then here's the extra credit 
blog post, Can You Teach Yourself Web Design? So here's the actual location of the blog post. Someone, in, I'm guessing one or two students from the class are going to be um, reading this and summarizing it for us in the discussion area. And then as you scroll down, you'll see that our discussions here, I just list for you to make sure, don't forget, this is your introduction that you were supposed to do. And then I give you your term project journal posting. So like I said, there are seven term project journal postings that are required uh, within the course. There's one for weeks one through seven. This is just you progressively developing your term project. So each week you'll find your post here, and then you'll be able to actually go and submit your post here. When you come into the term project journal, um, once you get to your journal, you're going to, uh, once other students have accessed the course, you're going to see all of the other students' journals over here on the left. You can click on Joey's and Sarah's and, and whoever else is in the class, and you can view their journals as well. Let's jump back over to the activities page. So here's your specific assignment for the journal. What you're doing is you're going to be sharing with the class the topic that you've got approved for me to, to use for your term project website. You're going to talk about why you want to use that topic. So for example, if your uh, website is a nostalgic Macaulay Culkin website, which is a funny term project that I saw someone do in the class before, um, you would talk about why you want to do that. And then you're going to create a brief list of web design principles based on what you've read in chapter one and then also what you've seen from other similar websites that are similar movie websites. And then in your subject line for your journal, let's go ahead and pop over to your journal, you need to make sure that your subject line is always says something to the effect of like week one. So week one, and then maybe you can let everyone know like the name of your website, that might be helpful. So um, let's say you're doing your website on the Godfather trilogy, which is very popular. So you would write that there. And then if there's a topic of the journal, so let's say this week's topic is just, uh, let me look, what's the topic of this week? Um, topic this week for the journal was website planning. So you would write website planning. And then you would compose your journal here. And then if you have a specific files that you need to attach, maybe images or examples of your HTML, you would add attachments like we've discussed before. Anytime that you need to share HTML files that are more than just one file or if you have images embedded in that file, you're going to make sure that you're going to have to zip that file. And we'll talk more about zipping later. But you'll need to put all of those files in a folder and then zip the files or compress the files or Mac, they call it archive I believe. You have to create basically just a, it basically like kind of collapses all the files into one folder that you can then send to someone rather than specific files. And then you're going to attach that. There is a five megabyte limit, FYI. So scroll down. Here we just have information about the extra credit discussion. So make sure that uh, you either volunteer or participate in that discussion. And then in week one, our only assignment is just submitting your term project choices. So you're just submitting to me your top three choices uh, for your term project. And then you'll receive an announcement. Uh, you'll see, receive for one, you'll receive um, a message back from me letting you know which assignments you've been approved to do. And then you'll also receive uh, an, a, an announcement of to the whole class letting everybody know who's all assigned to what genre. And then these following areas, these following pieces here at the after the activities page is just where you can submit those assignments. So here's where you can also do your introductions if you haven't done it yet. Here's where you can do your term project choices. So here you would write your your websites that you'd like to do, your top three choices, and you would submit that here. And then if you also want to give me any comments or if you need any attachments, you won't need attachments this week. And then your term project journal. This is where you can do your journal if you haven't done it yet. And then here's our discussion question. If you haven't done it yet, you know, can you teach yourself web design? You're going to go to this blog, read it. Again, this is volunteer, so someone else will be leading a student. This two students in this class will be leading this discussion. And then at the very end of every learning module, I give you a link to the general questions. So the main things that you need to take away from this little area is just make sure you understand how to navigate a learning module. Everything that you're going to need for each week is always right here. You can navigate using these directional areas up here at the top and using the table of contents. Make sure you don't forget 
that these do collapse to find all of the information here within within it. And again, always ask me questions if you have trouble. So let's bounce back to the home page. And that's basically everything for week one. Um, let's see, another thing that you might want to think about is after you've submitted an assignment, you can come back, I'm sorry, let's go to assignment. After you've submitted an assignment, you'll come back here and you'll see the graded. So to receive feedback from me, and that way you'll go to the graded area, and then you'll view the feedback that I've given you. Another key thing to always remember is that here in your inbox, if there's an assignment here in your inbox, that means that it, you haven't turned it in. So you need to make sure that you submit the assignment, then the assignment will actually come to me, I will grade it, and then it will be here within the graded area. If for some reason there was something wrong with your assignment, I would submit it back to you, and then you'll find it back here in your inbox, and then you'll go into the assignment, and you'll see the feedback that I gave you. There'll be feedback information saying, oh, you did this assignment incorrectly, I need you to resubmit. Um, discussions, again, you can come here to the discussion area. All of the discussions that are, are available for this week are always the ones that are visible. So here you can get to your extra credit discussion, term project journal, introductions, and then asking questions. We've already talked about mail. Assessments, this is where your quizzes are going to be. You don't have any quizzes in week one. Calendar, this will help you um, just see what assignments are due when. Um, search, this allows you to search for things in the course based on specific date criteria. If there's announcements in the course, which I do use the announcement tool a lot, you can come here and see all the announcements in one area. Otherwise, you'll just receive them whenever you log into the course, you'll get a pop-up. This is also a link that will take you back to the syllabus. And then here's a link to Web the Webster Library. So if you have any questions, uh, again, like I've always said, please let me know. The class and I are here to help. So we're all excited about meeting you this week and getting to know you and finding out about what your term project is going to be. Um, Again, I just hope that you have a fun online experience in this course. Um, that's about all I got to say. Uh, so if you've actually stuck with me and you've watched this whole video, go ahead and just start working on week one. And I will see you in the course.